Hello, and welcome to Eyes on Success, a weekly program covering a wide variety of topics of interest to people with vision loss. I'm Nancy Goodman Torpy. And I'm Pete Torpy. That's why we decided to put a lot of different things in that book because exercise is so important and you just have to find out what is it that works for you, whether it's a class, whether it's working at home, whether it's working with a partner, whether it's finding someone in your community. Uh, there are options. Okay, folks, let's get to it. Left, right, left, right, left. Let's do some exercise. If your visual impairment is keeping you from exercising and being as active as you would like, this is the book for you. We'll speak with Judy Dixon and Bonnie O'Day about their new book, Your Personal Path to Fitness, and some of the fitness opportunities that are available to people who are blind or have low vision. But first for our tip of the week. This week's tip is short but sweet and comes from Judy Dixon. Anything you do is better than nothing. Isn't that the truth? The best exercise is the one you enjoy enough to keep doing it. Support for Eyes on Success is provided by Envision Glasses, a smart glasses solution that helps visually impaired people read text, recognize objects, make video calls, and much more. Information and demos are available at CSUN booth number 1011 or at letsenvision.com slash glasses. And by APHConnectCenter.org, empowering people toward independence and success by providing blogs, information, and resources for individuals of all ages who are blind or visually impaired. Information and referral line are at 1-800-232-5463. You are listening to Eyes on Success. Success, 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 success. Let's start by meeting Judy and Bonnie. Today we have two guests with us, one of whom has been on the show many times before. So maybe we'll start with you, Judy. Why don't you tell our listeners who you are and what you do? Thanks, Pete. I am Judy Dixon. I work at the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled. But in this capacity, I am a freelance writer. I write books for National Braille Press and articles for Access World, and that's what I do. And our other guest is Bonnie. Bonnie, tell our listeners who you are and what you do. Thank you. I am Bonnie O'Day, and I live in Alexandria, Virginia. I am retired, but I was a researcher for Mathematica Policy Research, and now I volunteer. Uh, I do a lot with Ski for Light, which you'll hear from later, and I'm also legislative chair for a blindness organization in my state. Both of you are blind? Yes, I am uh, legally blind, so I have some vision, but I tend to use a lot of blindness techniques, such as a uh, a white cane and uh, jaws or voiceover. And Judy? I am blind. Well and truly. <laughs> <laughs> and I use all these blindness things like uh, jaws and voiceover and a guide dog and now a white cane. Support for Eyes on Success is made possible in part by our corporate partners. Find out more about partnership opportunities by sending an email to hosts at eyesonsuccess.net. This week's focus topic is Bonnie and Judy's recently published book, Your Path to Fitness, Finding What Works for You. Well, today we want to talk about the new book that you guys recently published about exercise. What is the name of the book? Your Personal Path to Fitness, Finding What Works for You. And what was the impetus for putting this book together? I've been writing for National Braille Press for quite some time on quite a few books. 
And I'm always looking for book ideas on topics that I haven't covered before. So looking around and thinking about what was needed, a lot of us know that there are many blind people who could benefit from information about fitness. And I thought fitness was a good idea. And I knew I wasn't going to write this one by myself. So I thought about who I knew who was more fit than me and uh, knew a lot about it and was a good writer and a responsible person. And I thought of Bonnie. So I have been interested in fitness for a long time and have actually participated in some research that showed that the level of fitness among people with disabilities, particularly blind people, was less than par. Now, I'm not saying every blind person, but we're talking about averages here. And there are a lot of negative results from that, um, which I'm sure we all know, diabetes, heart issues, weight issues, etc. And so my own personal commitment has been to try to stay as fit as possible. And any opportunities I have to help other people stay fit, uh, I like to pursue. So I was really excited when Judy asked me if I wanted to help write this book. One of the things that I think is so beneficial about this book is the enormous variety of types of exercises that you cover in the book. We tried very hard to have something for everyone. And there's everything from simple things you can do at home. Well, Bonnie wrote the chapter on fitness opportunities in your community. This is about going to a gym and things like that. I did the ones on using your iPhone or using your smart speaker. I was amazed at how many really neat skills I found for Alexa and Google Home devices. And then there's iPhone apps and that sort of thing. And then we have a huge section. Bonnie put together the list of organization and also the list of opportunities on the web. You can join Zoom exercise sessions and there's just so many opportunities. Whatever works for you, you could probably find it in this book. One of the things I was really excited about that I think is an outgrowth of the pandemic is there's a real proliferation of uh, Zoom classes and other things geared specifically for blind people now that are on the web. So if you want to exercise with others without leaving your home, you can do that now. I don't think that was true a couple years ago. It's interesting you talk about these forums being particularly geared towards people with visual impairments. And although visually impaired people certainly can exercise, sometimes there's a little bit more of a barrier or they do need some modifications. I mean, a sighted person can just walk outside and run around the block and jog if they want, or they can go to a gym and not have to worry about, can I see the displays on the screen to set the treadmill to the speed I want and things like that. And even some of these classes, I've been to some of these classes where there's all sighted people and they'll tell you left foot, one, two, three, left, right. And you have no idea what's going on from the directions. I found when I joined a gym that going and talking to the instructor in advance and trying to figure out what class would be the best for me was really helpful. For example, I took one class and I thought, oh, this will be easy for me. I'm pretty fit. I can do this. Well, it moved so fast that I knew after five minutes I couldn't do it. But then I took another class called Body Pump, and I actually hired a trainer. And for one of my sessions, I had the trainer take the class with me. And then I went up and talked to the instructor afterwards. And that actually worked out really well for me. If there was a move that I missed, um, I would stay after and the instructor would show me how to do it. Or I'm not a shy person, so sometimes the instructor would come over during the class and just show me. She'd tell the other people to keep going. And she'd say, I'm going to come out and visit Bonnie for a minute. And she would show me. And that, uh, that was completely fine with me. I was happy about that. And the other thing I would say about health clubs is if you're going to join a class, make sure to join a class where the music isn't too loud. 
so that you can actually hear what the instructor is saying. Another class that I took that I really enjoyed um, that Bob actually takes with me, he's also blind, is a spin class because you're on a stationary bike and you there are three or four positions that are easy to learn and the gear on the bike is easy to adjust. So that one is a good one for me too. So I actually think that as big of a barrier as the reality of trying to follow group instruction is, the attitude is at least as big of a barrier. I mean, you heard what Pete just said. I used to take classes pre-pandemic and occasionally I'd say, oh, this is a good one for you. I think you'll do well with it. And I used to swear by body pump until I moved cross country and now I can't find it. But, you know, body pump in particular, it's all hand weights at barbells, dumbbells, body weight. And it's all exercises that you can, you don't have to go right, left, you know, it's up, down, up, down, and you can handle that. But because Pete has the attitude that he has developed, which came from doing other group classes, he's like, forget it. This isn't going to work. Even though we planted him square between me and the instructor in the front of the room so everybody else got to watch, he just doesn't like it. And as you say, the instructors are often helpful if you talk to them ahead of time. They'll try to point things out. But I just find it more difficult to follow some of those classes. So I set up my own gym down the basement. I have my treadmill. I have my exercise bike and mat and weights and a, one of those TRX things, those straps that hang from the ceiling. We talk about the TRX in this book. There's a blind guy who's actually created some information about TRX specifically for blind users. For people who aren't familiar with that, maybe you can describe the TRX in more detail, because it's a very easy exercise piece of equipment to set up. Why don't you do it since you've got one? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, basically, you um, screw it to a rafter in the ceiling. Well, hold on. If they don't want to put holes in their ceiling, there's an adapter that you can use and just throw it over a door and shut the door. True. So you don't have to do permanent damage to your house. That is true. And that's the way our daughter used to use hers when she first got it. But anyway, it's just, it's two straps with handholds on it. And by suspending yourself in various directions and inflections from these handholds, you can exercise almost any muscle group in your body. And so. to get you started on that, we did one or two sessions with a personal trainer and the personal trainer is terrific at personal training, but didn't have a lot of experience explaining to somebody who was blind. So I showed up partly as Pete's driver, but also to help interpret what the trainer was trying to teach him in language that made more sense to Pete. And that, I think, was very successful. You've been using it for years. Yeah, I really love it. I think there's more sophisticated versions now, too, with electronics that have an iPhone app and so forth that goes with it. The TRX system is just one of many types of exercise you included in the book. So there's bound to be something in there for everyone. I would just say that that's why we decided to put a lot of different things in that book because exercise is so important and you just have to find out what is it that works for you, whether it's a class, uh, whether it's working at home, whether it's working with a partner, whether it's finding someone in your community. Uh, there are options, even if you don't have a lot of resources. I'm noticing that we're talking about paying trainers and buying equipment and all of that. And you don't really have to do that. One of the things that we have in our book that I think is really good is 10 easy things you can do at home without equipment. That's right up there in the first chapter. And even doing those 10 easy things every day will really help you. And they don't cost anything and you don't need any interpreter for that. Give us a sample of what you're talking about so people know what these options are. Oh, sure. One option, uh, and if you have like an Apple Watch or an, you know, a Fitbit or anything like that, you can set it so that at 10 minutes to the hour, it will tell you that it's time to stand. You can stand up, 
and you can stretch or you can take 250 steps in place or you can walk around your house every hour uh, you know, for several hours a day, that's one thing. You can do sit-ups or push-ups uh, during the commercials instead of going for the potato chips, like my husband sometimes does. Or you can take the stairs instead of an elevator if you're going to work. You can get off the bus a block early so that you get a little bit of walking in. Um, you can stand on one foot while you're waiting for your toast to come up in the morning or your coffee to percolate. So those are just really easy ways to build uh, fitness into your daily life without any terrific effort or expense. And some of the equipment that you talk about using, like hand weights or resistance bands, they're really only a few dollars. You know, some of the equipment gets expensive if you want to buy a professional grade treadmill that's in the thousands, but that's not necessary to, for getting started. There's plenty of very affordable equipment that you can use to help in your exercise routine. I really like my resistance bands and my stability ball. Those are the things I can sit on my stability ball while I'm typing at my computer. Our daughter doesn't even have a desk chair. She just sits on a stability ball or she raises the table and works standing up. You mentioned the availability of a number of apps and almost all of us have smartphones these days. What kind of apps can people find? There are a lot of nice apps and there are some apps that do an amazing job of actually describing things. I had fun testing all the apps. It was the most fit I'd been in a long time. There's the health app, of course, which can aggregate a lot of the information in the iPhone so that it helps you kind of pull things together. But then there's apps. Um, there's one called Aptive, which is a, it, it's called an audio workout app. And uh, it's very, very nice for uh, providing audio exercises and descriptions and so forth. Then there's things like Pedometer Plus Plus, which gives you information about steps you've taken. I actually have Pedometer Plus Plus on my Apple Watch. 293 steps. I've got a whopping 293 <laughs> steps today. It's in the morning, guys. <laughs> tell, tell, tell them That's it's in the morning. Tell them it's early in the morning. <laughs> Do you want to tell us what your daily average is? <laughs> My daily average is uh, about three to 4,000. You also talked about a number of options available on the Echo and Google smart devices. There is. One of my favorites is a, a stretching app. And the good thing about the Alexa apps is that they're all verbal. You don't have to see anything. And so they're very well described. I was going to say, even if you're sighted, there's no visual feedback. So they have to be pretty descriptive about what's going on. Well, that's correct. And, you know, if you're doing sit-ups or, or if you're doing things that are on the ground, even if you have something on your computer that you're supposed to be looking at, it has to be described because you can't see your computer when you're doing these exercises. So even some of the commercial ones on the computer are pretty decent. Oh, good point. And there's quite a few yoga skills for both Alexa and Google. And then you talked about a number of options via tools like Zoom. Yes, actually, uh, Ski for Light offers an exercise class using the Active app application every Thursday and Sunday night. A woman named Marion Wildgruber picks sessions on this active app and people call in and use a, a Zoom link and she plays the app and as we're doing the exercise she'll tell you about variations or what muscle group this is good for. And there are probably eight to 10 people now that are doing that on Thursdays and Sunday nights. And it's great. So one thing you talked about in the book that we haven't really discussed hardly at all is group exercise. And this doesn't necessarily mean going to the local gym and taking a class. You've got boating, team sports, and 
and all sorts of stuff. Can you talk about some of the group exercise options? Oh, sure. One of my favorites is called dragon boating. And with dragon boating, you're in a very long boat and each person has one oar. There are people who sit on the right side of the boat and the left side of the boat and you row in synchrony. And there's a coxswain in the back of the boat who beats a drum to keep time. And there are a number of different types of groups. There is a group for individuals with disabilities in many cities, but there are also groups for, you know, cancer survivors or young people or divorced people or, you know, whatever. And they've made it very clear, the organizers, that anyone is welcome to join any team they want. So there are also rowing clubs and um, of course, there's Ski for Light, which we talk about, which organizes uh, when the pandemic isn't happening. We organize a one-week uh, cross-country ski experience for individuals who are blind. Uh, there is uh, blind bowling. Um, it only takes just a few people to organize a blind bowling team, and so many localities have them. Uh, there's goal ball. There's beat baseball. There's just tons of, of activities out there for people who are blind. Whether there are those kinds of opportunities in your area, uh, I can't really speak to, but there are lots of them and they're all over. Wow. So there really is something for everyone. Are there any other facets of the book that you wanted to talk about? I think we've covered pretty much anything. I'll just say that people think that if you're going to get exercise, you need to do just really vigorous exercise for 90 minutes a day, you know, three times a week. And you need to bench press 150 pounds and you need to run a marathon. And that isn't true. Well, we provide some resources in the book for people who might want to do that. Most of us are not going to be the mountain climbers or the marathon runners. We're just regular people. Judy and I are just regular people. I'm 66 years old. I'm um, older. I do, <laughs> <laughs> I do some things to keep myself in shape and it takes some commitment to do that, but it isn't that we're trying to promote athleticism uh, at high levels for everybody. What we're saying basically is anything you do is helpful. And we hope that the book provides the resources for anyone, no matter what their fitness level currently is or what they would like it to be. The other thing I find useful is getting into a routine. If you say, well, I'll exercise tomorrow or I'll exercise the next day or just put it off. You just won't do it. I find it much easier to get into a regular routine where I know what I'm going to do and it's scheduled and it doesn't get put off. It's easier to do it today if you did it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's true. We talk a lot in the book, um, in one of the chapters about inertia. And the example that I give is that if I go on vacation and I haven't exercised in a while, you know, say I go to Florida for a week and lay on the beach, which I haven't done for a while, but sounds pretty good right now since it's the middle of winter. When you come back, it's really easy to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. But then, you know, you're not doing anything, so it's hard to get started again. But then once I get started, it's really easy to continue. You know, it feels good. I, I know that my endorphins get moving and, and I feel good. So it's easy to keep going once I've gotten started. There's a lot of positive reinforcement there when you exercise. They say a pattern takes like two or three weeks to establish. You are listening to Eyes on Success. Success, 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 success. success. Now for this week's final item, how to contact Judy Dixon and Bonnie O'Day and how to get their recently published book, Your Personal Path to Fitness, Finding What Works for You. Well, it was great talking about the book and the importance of exercise. Can one of you remind us what the name of the book is and where we can get it? The name of the book is Your Personal Path to Fitness, 
Finding What Works for You. It is available from National Braille Press, www.nbp.org. It's published in Braille, Electronic BRF, Daisy Text, and Word. It's a one volume Braille book and all formats are available for $12. And if people wanted to reach either of you, how would they do that? My email address is Judy, J-U-D-Y, at Judy Dixon, J-U-D-Y-D-I-X-O-N dot net. And my address is B like in baby, O-N-N like in Nancy, O-D like in David, A-Y, that's Bon O'Day at gmail.com. I know the final couple of chapters of your book have lots and lots of other resources, so it would be impractical for you to list all of those. But can you just kind of describe for everybody what other kinds of web-based and major groups are listed in your book, if people want to find all of those in one place? Sure. Chapter 5, I believe it is has a lot of web-based information and there you might find uh, the locations of some of the equipment we talk about, locations of some of the Zoom classes, other things that you can find on the web. And then the last chapter has lists of organizations uh, that are offering particular types of activity like um, there's a link to an organization that matches people who want to ride tandems, uh, a sighted captain and a blind person, or people who are interested in finding a running partner, organizations that are offering various types of sports activities. Including some you might not have thought of, like scuba or tennis or bowling. You've got lots and lots of options listed in this book. The book is worth it just to get the list of resources. Although it's nice if you follow some of the exercise programs listed earlier in the book and, and you actually get some exercise too. <laughs> and as usual, you can find all of that contact information in the show notes associated with this episode at www.eyesonsuccess.net. If you're looking for other episodes we've done about exercise or shows we've done with Judy Dixon, just enter exercise into the search field or Judy Dixon, and you'll find some of those shows. That's it for show 2211. Next week on Eyes on Success, we'll be talking about some of the programs available from Hadley. The mission of Hadley is to create personalized learning opportunities that empower adults with vision loss to thrive at home, at work, and in their communities. We'll speak with Ed Haynes, Chief Program Officer at Hadley, about some of the resources available, including workshops, podcasts, and discussion groups. We hope you all join us next week for that episode. You've been listening to Eyes on Success, hosted and produced by Nancy Goodman Torpy and Peter Torpy. You can access the full archive of previous shows, subscribe to the podcast, and much more by going to our website, www.eyesonsuccess.net. If you have questions about anything you've heard on the show or have suggestions for future shows, send an email to hosts at eyesonsuccess.net. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.